We're going to give you the truth that you're not going to get from the mainstream media. This is the Nerds Podcast, and this is Chris Hardwick. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. It's Rob. It's really Corey, and this is the Only <laughs> Anthem Podcast. Just to be clear, yeah. please don't sue us, Chris. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome to episode 120 of the O the Anthem podcast. Uh, whether you're listening to us on OTheAnthem.com, welcome. Uh, if you're not, you should check out OTheAnthem.com because you can find links to all of the stuff that we have going on. Not it's nice only there. The it's roomy. It is very roomy there. <laughs> uh, and you'll be able to check out all the information on the show notes, everything we talk about there. Uh, hey, you'll also be able to check out uh, Heretics Project that we're working on. And it, what, there's a merch store there. You'll be mm-hmm. able to pick up some merch. Uh, everything uh, pending, more... pending final approval. We may have a Baltimore Corner T-shirt. Hey, on there you go. Yeah. So additional stuff. All that's available at ohtheanthem.com. And if you're listening to us on your third party platform of choice, welcome. Whether that's Stitcher, Dogcatcher, uh, iTunes, or our favorite Pocket Cast, uh, welcome listening there. And if you have the ability, give us a <laughs> uh, rating and a review. Five star rating for a five star podcast. And your reviews help us climb the charts so that other people can find uh, the podcast here and enjoy it as well as you. Uh, and of course, uh, if you are listening to the audio format, thank you so much for listening, but you are breaking the first two rules of the podcast. Download. Don't listen. But just the same, thank you for joining us. And uh, of course, though, you're missing out on the half of really of the show because we are uh, we don't we have a video on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash O the Anthem where you'll be able to check out videos of Corey and I sitting here in the beautiful O the Anthem studio uh, with a video portion that explains things that you may not know about the podcast as well as our infamous sidebar uh over there on Corey's right your left as you're watching uh where you can actually uh skip ahead if you want to stop listening to me talk but yeah. uh yeah so which i wish i could do right now i know right don't you just wish you had the sidebar <laughs> yeah, we need yeah. to cover all the stuff that we, we cover all the stuff there's a lot of places people can find us and of course you can find us at o the anthem on all your social networks uh so make sure you you follow there to stay up to date on all the latest that we have going on including the best of Corey's tweets uh which is what the Anthem's Twitter is for. So I retweet yours as well. <laughs> I know, I well, I retweet the ones that you retweet. So it's I it's, do a lot of retweeting. Yeah, I know. It, it, I but, got it dialed in right but now. But there's though. there's there's good stuff in there, and I mm-hmm. like to I like to share the the relevant ones. Yes, no, especially absolutely. if I feel like we're going to talk about something that's on that tweet, then I well, like to pass that along. Um, before we get too far into the show, though, yes, there's some oh the Anthem related news. Yes, there is. So. Uh, Heretics came out last week. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Uh, well, a week listening. and a half ago, I as guess, you're as you're listening. Is. Yeah. Um, On Tuesday, because why wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, now, the final three episodes that we have planned are all planned for the Eastern Shore. Right. Um, and we are currently working on getting that all lined up. Casted, so there, locations, and all that stuff. Right. So there's going to be a little bit of break before the last three, but as soon as... That's Corey, all lined Corey says, up. Corey says break. I call it a hiatus. We're yeah. taking a hiatus. In We're order, taking the Christmas break off. Right. In order to make sure that the last three episodes are as good as the first five that you've seen thus far. Yeah. We would hate to rush it and just get something out there and get it done. And if it doesn't meet the high expectations that you guys have for us and that we have for ourselves, I think it, it would not be as – it wouldn't be the final product that we want to have. Right. So, and I want to, I want to, I want to kick it strong. Exactly. Down the break, so, so this will, we're going to take a, I don't know how long off. It, honestly, I'm hoping it'll be as small as possible, but we want to make sure that we cast it correctly, that we have the right actors playing the right roles, and that we have the right locations for it, so that we can produce uh, the last three fantastic episodes of Heretics for this season. So, uh, in the meantime, uh, go to o the Anthem. Uh, OtheAnthem.com or OtheAnthem on YouTube and revisit the previous five episodes mm-hmm. of Heretics uh, because there's a lot of great stuff there. So make sure you check that out. And just share them with your friends. And of course, you know, yeah. yeah. Fun. And hey, listen, if you really are enjoying Heretics, the best way that you can help us produce more Heretics episode, become a supporter on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash OtheAnthem. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash OtheAnthem. Uh, you can become a supporter for as little as $1 a month. And what that helps us do is to do exactly what we've been talking about. When we go out location scout when we need to go out and get actors when we need to get the things that the props and everything that it takes all that stuff takes money and i mean the bandwidth for the podcast and everything that we do here we produce all of this free content for you every single week so for as little as a dollar a month you can become a supporter uh, and it helps us produce all of this great stuff that you like but it's not as if you're just giving money no 
because you get a lot of stuff back as yeah. well. You get early access to the Heretics episodes. You get access to the pre-roll, which gets better and better every single week, I think. Uh, so, And all of that stuff. You can find a full list of everything that you get based on the levels at which you donate at patreon.com forward slash show the anthem. So check that stuff out there. Yeah, but we'll have a short hiatus on he- uh, Heretics, and uh, that'll be coming back to you as soon as we can get an episode out. Because God knows I love keeping Corey up all week long editing, and I don't—I'm <laughs> upset that he's going to get sleep this week. I actually editing. got sleep this week. I it know. was weird. I, I I fell asleep on like Wednesday at like seven o'clock, and I was just like, <laughs> I'm very upset about that. I don't <laughs> think that it should. I mean, I woke up and then stayed up till four, but you know. <laughs> well, and so I guess uh, then. The, your movie selection this week didn't impact your sleep. It didn't keep you up. It didn't scare you. Nope. I, I ain't scared <laughs> of no ghosts. Uh, I haven't said anything about this on social media. Me either. All week because I wanted I wanted this to be the place. I wanted to have sort of more of a long form place to talk about this because I feel time. I feel like uh, it deserves it a little bit. So both Rob and I independently of one another saw the, uh, the latest Ghostbusters film. Yes. The much maligned Ghostbusters film. Unfortunately. Um, and uh, I generally enjoyed it. Yeah. I, I would not say that it's great cinema. Not meant to be, though. It, it's That's not its purpose in life. But it was very funny, and it, it, it was enjoyable. And when I walked out, I was happy that I saw it. Yeah. And uh, I, I maintain, though, I saw it opening weekend because I wanted... Uh, I wanted funny, funny people to have the opportunity to have. If they didn't open big, this movie was just going to be over. Yeah. If it opened to twenty million dollars, it would have been done, and we wouldn't have movies like this anymore. So I figured it was better to invest early and let it let it happen. Right. Yeah. Um. Here's my thought, though. Um. It was it was fun. It was good. Let's not make another one. Okay. <laughs> because uh. I don't. I don't trust all the parties involved to be able to make more of these and make them good. Right. Um, now that's not any kind of uh, uh, criticism of Paul Feig or Kate McKinnon or Kristen uh, Wiig or mm-hmm. you know anybody else who was involved in the flick. I thought everyone did a great job. Uh, my girl Milana as yes. a subway rat lady. <laughs> A small but memorable role. Um, I I think most of this uh, movie's problem was studio related. Right. That's 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 where I'm coming from with it. Um, it I I don't think they really knew what they had, and uh, because of that, they were uh, they were kind of shuffling the deck a bit. As we as they went along in the production of this movie, and I think it could have been a little bit better if you sort of just trusted the people you had and just let them go out and make the movie they wanted to. And in fact, you said you would like to get this cast and crew together and just make something else, make something that's not ghost. Yeah, I mean, if if Paul Feig wanted to write a movie and it was called, uh, you know, uh, our bachelorette party in Vegas, they've never made a movie like that with four <laughs> funny people. Um, <laughs> You know, and just cast everybody who is in this movie. Yeah. Paul Feig, right, direct. Like, yeah, I'm perfectly... I, I support this entirely, because I like everybody who was involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just don't know if Ghostbusters is, like, the place for it. Uh, I understand that they were all really excited to make Ghostbusters, mm-hmm. and I was really excited to do when, when it was over, and I, I, I enjoyed it, but uh, I just get that, like... Uh, the next one that comes out is not going to be good. And that the next one that comes out is not going to be like, uh, it's going to be like the, the second version of the, uh, uh, God damn it. What was the Johnny Depp movie that just came out? Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. It's going to be like, you know, the, Oh, the first one made money. So we got to make a second one. No, you don't No. <laughs> well, and to be it's fair, okay. I understand you, you rebuilt the property and everything like that. But, uh, the, we, we don't need, like, a new Ghostbusters movie every two years. This one ma- didn't make money. It probably won't make money. After the ad, A&P budget. Right. So, um, and I, I will agree with you. Uh, well, well, here's my question, I guess, before I get into my commentary. 
if they don't make a second one, how are we going to find out who <coughs> this Zool character is? <laughs> I'm glad you stuck around through the credits. <laughs> Lots of credits, but guys, listen, I am big on the after credit scenes. Yeah, but. And as much as I love the guys that are below the line. Yeah, respect below the line, please. I, but you stick it in there. Stick it in there after the like the first half of the below the line people. Then give me the scene. Because it was 11 minutes of credits yeah. before that scene. And I, I, I suspect that that was Paul Feig saying, like, no, you're going to – if you want to see it, you're going to see everyone who worked on this movie. <laughs> but we also have to sit through the, like – Many thanks to the New York City filming and the yeah. city and the police and the fire and the, and the borough of New York and the Bureau of Man. I'm, I'm like, oh, God, all right, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> all that's contractual, though. Oh, I know. But yeah. I mean, you could stick in that, that, that after credit scene before that stuff. I do like how they, they kept the credits interesting, though, all the way through. Yes. With, like, their various things. Well, like a couple of scenes and, yeah, a couple of things that were going on. Right. There. At least before they got to the second half of the below-the-line people. Like, after you get out of the big name below the line, then it was just kind of plain. But Yeah. Um, as, anyway, so my thoughts on it are this. It was a good movie. Mm-hmm. And much like Fast and the Furious, which if you uh, – or Fast 7, is that what it is? Right. Uh, if you remember our commentary on that. If you went into that expecting, you know, Citizen Kane – you were going to be disappointed. If you went into Ghostbusters expecting Citizen Kane, you were going to be disappointed. Going to have a bad time. Yeah, it's the, it's not meant for that. It's right. meant to have an, a funny movie with funny people and just have a good time. See, but, I mean, the difference there is that, you know, I, I go in to Fast and the Furious expecting that it's not going to be good, mm-hmm. like as a, a, a piece of film art. Right. But I want I want the, like, cars and I want the crashes and I want the stunts. But I want... Yeah, but I want them to be based in reality okay. somewhere. <laughs> All right, but they, you understand they have to keep stepping it up. You might, as, movie. You might as well have Herbie <laughs> as one of the cars if you're going to do this shit. Okay, but I went into Ghostbusters and I said I have very few expectations. You have four very funny women. Yeah. I want to be laughing the entire time. Right. And it's called Ghostbusters. And knowing what I know about the property, I expect that there to be some, one, ghosts – Two, that those ghosts get busted. Right. And that there is some level of technology which at some points backfires but in the end works for them. Right. 100%. Nailed it on the head. Yeah. So, I mean, what else are you looking for really? Um, And and it was a good movie. You know, I think that – I agree with you that the studio had some editing in it. I said after I walked out that uh, I was really attracted to Kate McKinnon's character. But I got the inkling that they were trying to play her as a lesbian, but it never came out that she was a lesbian. Yeah. And, and then you said that you thought that they had actually probably actively cut that out. No, they did actively cut that. Well, there you go. Yeah. So uh, here's here's my main problem with the movie. Uh, it's not anybody who was involved. I think the studio meddled a little too much in this. Yes. Um, there's things in there that just felt like they were notes. And when I can when I can see notes so clearly, it kind of takes me out of it a little bit. And I know I'm different because I make movies and I get notes and I realize how that affects the process right. and everything. But you know, like uh, the some of the examples I made, you know, the Kate McKinnon being a lesbian but not like cutting any mention out of it, right. sort of felt like somebody at the studio said, uh, "Too much we, get, we have enough going on with this movie. We don't need to add another yeah. thing in there." Um, uh, the the level of the science talk felt very noty to me. Yeah. Like somebody said, like, how are you supposed to know that they're smart scientists unless they say smart science things? That was a little bit too much. Um, the fact that the ending just sort of, you know, again, no spoilers, but like just Whoa. sort of, they just went right into it. They're just yeah. like, oh, fuck plot. <laughs> Let's just do this. <laughs> Let's get it over with. Yeah. Um, this something tells me that was in an earlier cut and didn't make it to the final. Yeah version uh it's not the best possible version of the movie that it could be but i mean you can't expect that that i think i I think really that though i think he made a movie that he wanted to make and i suspect that the studio probably had some some inklings of taking out little bits and pieces yeah but i also think that you and i are weird and, and you said it that now that we are in the process of like writing this kind of stuff um Two weeks ago, I think, when I talked to well, – yeah, when Jim was here and we were talking about uh, Independence Day and Sur- uh, Resurgence. Yeah. When I saw that, the person I saw it with loved it. And then I mentioned the like 
Did you notice that the, like at one point there were four countdowns going on simultaneously, and it felt like there were all of these build ups like that that the twist there was really no clear twist in the second act, and then the third act was kind of unclear. It was just wait, where is the thing that's going to be the the end of the movie? Right. And I, and I realized that that's a writer thing. That's a we know what three act structure is. We know how this thing is supposed to develop. We also know that when you hit that peak in the third act, you're supposed to have a there's a payoff after that. Yeah. And not that it makes it any less enjoyable because I enjoyed Ghostbusters, but you get that feeling of like, okay, so we are five pages from the start of the third act. Let's hit it. We're going to hit that third act. We're going to hit the top of the emotional chain and we're going to hit the end and we're done. Yeah. And get it out. Let's get it now. But it was two. It was an hour 56. It didn't feel like an hour 56. They could have added another 10 minutes in there and I would have felt fine about it. Yeah. I, I wasn't squirming at any point. No. I never was like looking at the time or anything like that. Right. Um, Here's the big thing though. Is it the anti-men movie that they made it out to be? No. So, first of all, trolls, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Honestly, you know, here's and I think this is the 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 thing that I like about it. Uh, right now, there is just a bevy of incredibly talented, smart, funny, dynamic actresses out there uh, of all age ranges and of all colors and ethnicities and everything. If you want, if you want an actress. To play any role you want, you have yeah. really good choices out there, and they far outweigh the men. If I were to make Ghostbusters with men, like reboot it with men, I'd have a hard time putting together four people right. that I feel like I could like realistically open the flick with. When I, unless I, you I, unless you went old, and I was going to say <laughs> I I just caught Ocean's Thirteen yeah. on cable, and I realized that it's been six years since Ocean's Thirteen came out. But that was when we had a heyday of a lot of guys in their 30s and early 40s. But those guys are now... Or guys who could play 30s, early 30s, 40s. Yeah. Right. They weren't actually, but they were yeah, playing... I mean, like, or, Matt Damon is not no. is not 37 years old, but he certainly looks 37 years old, which and is all that really matters. He's playing Born Again now. Yeah, yeah. So, but, but, I mean, yeah. So, but those guys have now aged out of that. You could not do Ghostbusters in the same way. I right. don't know that you could come up with four guys who are going to be in these roles. And don't get me wrong, I could find you four, four funny. Men. I could find you four funny actors who would, yeah. who would fit. But it's I, I feel like any four that I would come up with would not be as good as those four. Women. The you know, yeah, Wig McCarthy, Jones, and uh, McKinnon. McKinnon. But like, and uh, God, if I learned anything from this movie. Uh, Hemsworth needs more more comedy. Yes, like he's who th- who hilariously thought? funny. Who would have thought? Oh my god, it was I was laughing at him constantly. And did you like, by the way, just because you mentioned the fuck the trolls, the yeah. the, the throw in scenes that they had there where they were like on the internet, like looking at the comments. <laughs> Don't listen to the trolls. <laughs> yeah. Don't read the comments. <laughs> yes, um, but here's what I'm gonna say: that I picked out two things. Uh, and I'm not going to mention specifics because I don't want to get into spoilers. But two things where I think that the, the grown men who have the mentality of little boys picked these things out and said, uh, this is why the movie's anti men. Mm-hmm. It is no secret that Chris Hemsworth is, a, well, it was a secret he's funny. Now we know he's funny. Yeah. But he's also playing a, a, a less than intelligent man. Yeah. Uh, and the conversation we had before the mics turned on was. Uh, the problem is it, it, that's not anti-men. Uh, whether it's making the statement on purpose or accidentally, Chris Hemsworth is playing a character that oh, it's women totally on purpose. That, oh, you think it is? Okay. Yeah, no, no, no doubt. Okay, so he's playing a character that women have played for the last sixty years. Yeah, and if it was a woman, without question, we would see it without question. We'd be like, "Oh, the dumb blonde who's a model." Oh, yeah. okay. It, he's basically playing Lou Ann from King of the Hill. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And That's nobody the, questions that. Right. But that but oh now that it's a man doing it, this anti men movie that makes men out to be stupid. There was a couple other things I saw that you know, there's a couple other characters who seem to like be negative towards men. And I'm like, if that was a guy talking to another guy, this would not be the conversation. Right. Because the woman is talking to the guy and she's not being what, respectful or you know, she's being uppity or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Now it's an anti men movie. There was also a moment in which one of the uh, one of the characters shot one of the ghosts in a touchy area for men, mm. 
And uh, that's where the person I saw it with elbowed it and was like, this is the anti-men part. And I'm like, if every 80s movie ever, yeah. that was the joke. It was like, kick the guy in the balls. Like, that's the funny yeah, thing. You, it, I, I find it funny that the people who are probably commenting in mass on the trailers... And that, <laughs> Don't get me wrong. The trailers are bad. Well, yeah, no. Trailers are really bad. Did not but, show the movie. Though. Yeah. Um, but the people who are commenting on the trailers probably went right from their comment of like, you know, like, fuck women. They're terrible and they're not funny and I don't know why we're doing this. Blah, 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 Bill Murray. Yeah. Like, uh, they probably went right from there to like fail blog where they were watching <laughs> people getting hit in the nuts over and over and over again. Right. So yeah. But that's shut okay. the fuck up. Um, overall arching message to all you – and here's the thing. I, I didn't want to go into this saying and the, the you people, guys are – The people who are like laying on Leslie Jones on Twitter, like that shit's just ridiculous. Like <sighs> if, yes. you, if, you yeah. read a, if you read a story uh, about it, you will see some tamer racism. Oh, yeah, they don't use the worst of the tweets. Yeah, the, you, what you'll see is you'll see like uh, – uh, <laughs> What they can print in their <laughs> magazine, like the uh, the gorilla from the Cincinnati Zoo with the the child, and it's just like Leslie Jones was just trying to save it. Why are you doing this? Like right. that kind of like horrible racism, yeah, would make it through on an article about like you know like New York Times, you know Leslie Jones, you know that sort of thing. The ones that are really bad, if you just go on Twitter and just you know type it, I can't remember her handle offhand, but yeah, um, just type in her handle and just search, and you'll see. It's almost hard to believe that there's racism like this in this country. Yeah. And so you turn on the Republican National right. <laughs> And then we get to see it. And I was going to say, uh, Ghostbusters, the response to Ghostbusters was racism, misogyny, uh, and hate. And yeah. then went home and uh, the Republican National Convention was on and we saw a lot of racism and misogyny and hate. Yeah. So, you know, hey, 2016. Yay. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's go through the week. Shall we? Sure. Let's just start from the beginning and we'll end with with Trump's speech. Okay. So, Um, night one, highlight. Chachi at the uh, Republican National Convention. Yeah, or that that soap star or whatever who who is just like, you can't tell me that Obama's not a Muslim. Okay, so much like like these assholes who are talking shit about Ghostbusters, I did not actually watch a second of convention coverage. I watched the the trailers, the highlights, and I'm going to make comments based on that. And I'll explain why when we get to Trump. But go ahead. Sorry. So you you saw a little more of the coverage than I did. I watched watched the uh, Melania speech. Yeah. I watched uh, Ted Cruz. I watched Mike Pence. And I watched uh, uh, Donald. Okay. Uh, that's that's my extent of what I watched. All right, so yeah, so the um, first night, and was... I saw I saw ten minutes of Rudy Giuliani look, looking like he was trying to induce a heart attack on stage. He was trying to be Donald. <laughs> he was clearly trying to channel his yeah, Donald, his in inner his Donald. Uh, but yeah, so night one was like the night of the oh, they're still alive. Uh, stars, yeah, and uh, also... no, but we we had we had Melania night one. No, she was night two. Wasn't she Wednesday night? No. Okay, maybe not. It was Mal Melania was night one. You're right. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, where she played her eyes, Michelle Obama. Which yeah, is... and I was gonna say let's not let's not glaze over that yeah. where she clearly plagiarized the speech from the 2008. No, I'm not. State. I'm not uh, saying that Melania necessarily did that because I don't think she's really that smart. But <laughs> uh, misogyny. <laughs> Hashtag socially acceptable misogyny. It's Thank a new one. Yeah. It's taking up a lot of your 140 characters. <laughs> it's all right. Women are used to getting less for the same. Oh. Oh. No. Oh. oh. What? Good God. The biting criticism of. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't I don't think she stole it intentionally. Um, I'll say this. When, when I first saw the reaction to this. Mm-hmm. Uh. The of the six or seven lines that were pointed out as plagiarism, a lot of them are lines similar to what you get in almost every convention speech, right? And especially convention speeches from either the candidate or the candidate's wife, okay, with a lot of uh vague sort of you know, like I believe the future is the children, and you know, that sort of thing, like you'll get those. All day, and when I was seeing, when I was seeing, like almost word for word on both sides, yeah, 
uh, for the first couple of those of those clips, I was like, well, I don't think this is really theft as much as it's just like, okay, this is how, this is how it's sort of written. And, but, but once you got to the last line where it was like, almost like, you know, two sentences long and it was almost verbatim the same. Yeah. I was like, all right, no, <laughs> no well, we've and, crossed over. And like the, the world's foremost authority on plagiarism runs like, runs it through their thing. And it's yeah. like, there's one in a hundred trillion chance. One in a trillion. One in a trillion chance of this actually not being plagiarized, of this just being right. the same cadence, the same delivery, yeah. everything. Um, and also, overlooked, I think, too much, she also plagiarized uh, Rick Astley in that speech. <laughs> because Trump is never going to give you up, and he's never going to let you down. Yeah. I just here's and I would have loved it if like after she did that little bit she was just like slowly under the mic like dessert you <laughs> as the story developed during the week I was like trying to follow what was going on and then eventually like as I was telling you earlier I I saw that the speechwriter said this is not the speech that uh, that the campaign delivered to her there were sections of it but these this section specifically was added in by her after. So I cannot say anything about that. Uh, and then you were saying that you saw something from Trump Incorporated. Yeah. Had some, actually. Some woman took it responsibility. Uh, public relations person from Trump's uh, legitimate business enterprise. Right. Took responsibility for writing it uh, and said that Melania had specifically pointed out these lines from Michelle Obama's speech that she liked and wanted to do something similar to. And she had basically she just did. written, <laughs> writ, wrote those, copy and paste those lines directly into the speech and was like, we'll get to it later. And then never got to it later. Right. Um, and I understand that. And then I also said, clearly uh, something written by somebody very close to Trump because the there was a, I've offered my resignation. But Donald Trump, being the good, kind-hearted person he is... <laughs> Said that we all make mistakes, and I I should be allowed to keep my job and learn from this experience. Right. <laughs> Further proving how amazing Donald Trump is. <laughs> well, and I will say that two things. Number one, uh, I've done that before. I've yeah. done the copy and paste, and like I'll get back to this. I'm going to change it, and then it changes, and then by the time I get to the final version, I'm like, that's very familiar, and I realize that nine versions later, I changed it. And then changed it back right. almost directly to what I took it from. So I see that that happens. I don't think that's what happened. I'm 99% sure they stuck it in there and they were like, no one's going to notice. Yeah. And then immediately on Twitter, I didn't, I wasn't watching, but on Twitter I was getting like messages of like, that sounded familiar. Has anybody heard that before? And then like eventually it was like, okay, so that's clearly from uh, 08 and what Michelle said. And what I, here's the, it, the, the overwhelming thing I don't get. Uh, Melania rips off Michelle Obama. Yeah, but when Melania walks off stage, all the all the pundits, all the people are going like, "Look at how poised and brilliant she is, and how great, and everything she said, and these four lines in particular were really great. She really knocked that out of the park." Yeah. Uh, and then as soon as it came out, the plagiarism, and then. Everyone going like making any excuse for why it wasn't plagiarism, and then right. eventually dropped on, someone dropped on their sword. Um, and specifically the the uh, John Stewart coming back on Colbert, yes, when he ran through like the the hypocrisy of the people who are like supporting Trump. It's like you know, like he's an egomaniac, and uh, he's a uh, has no no experience in government. Is what they were saying about Obama. Right, eight years ago, but now it's great because it's Donald. <laughs> right, yeah. like and it was the reason. Michelle. It was the reason why we were going to die as a country. Right, eight years ago, but it's the reason why we're going to save the country now. And it's just like, I'm, I'm, a, if I, I don't like mayonnaise. If I eat something that has mayonnaise in it, <laughs> I will. You'll see me like go like, wait a minute. Something about this isn't right. <laughs> you'll see me like realize it. Like <laughs> processing. The yeah, yeah. If I think that somebody who's never had real government experience uh, or is an egomaniac, I'll probably, and I don't want that as a president, then I'll probably say, like, uh, I don't like that then. Uh, I don't like it now. So yeah. you're saying you won't vote for me? Is that what you're saying? Well, I mean, I know you. I know. 
And I didn't say that I didn't want that in a candidate. I just said that if I if that was something I didn't want. So you'd probably vote for Ted Cruz then too, oh, right? Man, I listen. Things you'll probably never hear me say again. I love that Ted Cruz speech. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, things that, that Craig Mazin will never see again. Yeah. I'm proud of Ted Cruz. <laughs> The fact that Ted Cruz was allowed to go up there and just basically be like, yo, fuck Donald. Ah, is like the best thing ever. And by the way, that almost assured that Bernie will not be able to speak in the yeah. DNC. <laughs> God, I can't wait. He, he's got to speak, though, because he's got to bring the Bernie bros around somehow. Right. But he's going to be on a short leash. He's, he's gonna... got a collar underneath. <laughs> he's got electrodes in it. And Hillary's he's just got, standing on the he's side. He's got the snipers up on the top of the... <laughs> The big gold yeah. hook from the night of the Apollo, just waiting, <laughs> waiting in the background. Come on now. Come on. He's, he's going to be like, let me tell you something about Hillary Clinton. And then the curtain falls on him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. How'd that happen? <laughs> Hillary with big scissors. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's the guy who is uh, clearly non-union. Yeah. And this is why we need to hire union <laughs> workers. <laughs> he was a temp. We need union workers. <laughs> Thanks, um, Hillary. No, but, but that Ted Cruz thing was amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I, I. What I love so much is that I hate him so much. And yet he's saying exactly what I would want him to say, and I still hate him. I don't <laughs> get. He's it, he's so horribly unlikable, and I, something tells me that he, he, I mean he's basically just taking a big bet that Trump doesn't win. Yes, because I mean if Trump wins, Whoa, he's done. He's done forever. He's done in the party for a yeah. while. Yes. Uh, but if Trump loses by, like, you know, historic numbers, then uh, Ted Cruz is the one who's like, hey, I told you so. Should have been for me. Yeah, it was the one who was saying the whole time. He's not yeah. He's not the one. Now, if you listen to me more often, then maybe we'd be in a better place. Cruz 2020. Also, uh, if – well, two things. One, if he was planning on making a third-party run, that was a good tester. Yeah. And what people were – the Republican response showed how divided the party is. Yeah. Because – the Trumpers were in there saying, endorse, 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 endorse. And there were people cheering for him. And, like, the second thing I was going to say is that there was a – there was a – there's something in a narcissistic sociopath that allows you to just smile and wave and peace out as people boo you. Yeah. But if you listen to some videos, there's a lot of cheering. Well, so here's, here's what happened because you weren't watching. Yeah. Uh, Cruz uh, – was getting the like endorse Trump, endorse Trump chant, well, and I know Trump came out, and then Trump came out, which yeah. sort of split the room with cheers and boos. Well, no, so because... like the boos were coming in, and then all of a sudden Trump appeared, and then there weren't as many boos happening. Okay, well, and maybe it's the what I the source of the video I watched, but what they were saying is that the people who had called for the vote on Tuesday night that were saying unlock our delegates on the first vote and let, allow us to vote whoever we want. Uh, we're actually cheering Cruz, and that it was the people <laughs> like Texas. Are you saying boo or boo earns? <laughs> right. No, but they uh, they talked to the Texas delegation yeah. before he went up because they're they he released the speech to the you know you turn in the right. speech early so they can they can vet it um, and make sure you're not going to go up there and like be like yo fuck Donald. Uh, <laughs> Do you think he but, had an endorsement in the speech? No, he didn't. Oh, good. So in the in him. the early version, but they they, they kept saying like. You know, don't don't rule out an endorsement. He might just drop it in when he feels like the time is right. Like maybe he's got it chambered, but he's just right. yeah. waiting for the right moment, like when the crowd wants it or whatever. Um, but apparently, they talked to members of the Texas delegation, and like all their reactions were essentially like, "Listen, he won. Don't cry mm-hmm. over spilled milk. Just endorse the man and get over with it." Well, and to be fair, uh, the, everyone at the at the RNC are hardcore Republicans. Yeah, and I think that if you're Ted Cruz and crazy, oh, I'm crazy. If you're Ted Cruz and you want to take a flavor, and that's of, not a Republican thing either. The people who are going to be at the DNC also crazy, also crazy. Yeah. The people who who are elected as delegates are just generally speaking insane. Yeah. Uh, exclusion of uh, our friend of the show Beth, who yeah. listens, who is going as a delegate for Bernie, and is not crazy. In that way, Just right? Kidding, but. Uh, but no, um, if you're Ted Cruz and you wanted to see, you know, test the water, what a way to do it! Because there were Republicans who were like, "That's the kind of man we need leading our party," and you know, then maybe they're not at the RNC. I think a lot of them were at the RNC, but um, 
And if you're running as a third partier and you want to say, can I split this party up? Can I get some votes? Um, and a story started coming out on Wednesday or Thursday, whatever it was, about uh, what happens if we split del- – if the uh, Electoral College doesn't end up with a majority. Because if Ted Cruz takes Texas, that is 54, 52 electoral votes. That makes it r- exponentially harder for any for, – well, for Donald Trump, it makes it almost impossible yeah. to get the uh, the two forty four that he needs. Um, no, two seventy, two seventy that he needs. Yeah. Um, but you know, if you get Bernie or somebody else on the left who takes New York or California, California probably, and gets those fifty four, then now you have a four horse race basically because it's going to be almost impossible for anyone to get to two seventy. Yeah. And then it was like, oh well, you know, he's got strong support still amongst certain Republicans, more conservative Republicans, and Mike Pence is not helping. Or him. real Republicans. Real Republicans. Yeah. Uh, although I, I don't know that you would consider you would consider yourself a real Republican, fiscally conservative, but not um, not a Cruz Republican though. You're no. not a Trump Republican, but you're also not a Cruz Republican. Yeah, there's not a place for me in the Republican <laughs> Party anymore. It's the grand old party. Why is how is there not a place for you? Uh, I'll tell you this: uh, Mike Pence's speech was uh, a combination of boring and interesting at the same time. <laughs> yes, uh, because he's not an electric public speaker. No, but that's um, not why they got him. We, right, we got a public speaker. He's he's the base. Yeah. Um, and, and fundraiser, and according to uh, rumors, as when uh, uh, the Trump people reached out to John Kasich, <laughs> oh, he might Mike Pence might be essentially the president. Well, you know, it's so I wanted before. to listen to what he had to say. I wanted to get a get a sense for the man. We all know Dick Cheney was running the country for eight years, so let's yeah, be honest I mean, about that. He, the he, picture of Bush with the phone he, upside down on his ear because Cheney's like, "Here, talk to the governor." Eh, yeah. he's like, hey, governor, how's it going? <laughs> And Dick's like, bomb the <laughs> shit out of him. <laughs> Take no prisoners. Give me a new heart. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, apparently, according to uh, uh, people inside of Sources. Governor John Gasick's office, <laughs> uh, Donald Trump Jr. came by and offered John Kasich the the chance to be the most powerful vice president in the history of the United States. And wait, what would the vice president be in charge of in that case? Uh, foreign policy and domestic policy. But wait, what would Donald Trump be doing then? Quote, unquote, making America great again. <laughs> oh, God. Which I love. He's, he's just going to bomb around, like, going, like, you know. On the plus side, Mike Pence did not close out his speech by giving the Heil salute. No. <laughs> <laughs> to the poster in oh. the side of the, uh, uh, on the side of the arena. So God. there's that. I love how quickly she like She's she like, just oh, like, shit. Uh. It was it was like it was like a real like <laughs> if you wanted if you wanted to if you wanted to mimic the the Heil Hitler Nazi yes. salute, that's how you do it. You just click straight and then oh hey Well no, because here's the thing. <laughs> she turns towards the image of Trump. Yeah. She clicks her heels, straightens her back, and then arms boom. straight out. Oh, and then almost catches herself, and you see her her shoulders slump and her heels come apart, and she waves. Yeah. This begs an interesting question, which I've right. heard on a lot of 3%er and conspiracy blogs. Do you think he's making them salute him in the back where nobody can see? Do you think he's getting the Heil in the back from his supporters? I don't think so, because I imagine if he was, we'd know about it. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. The, how would we know? This is the most tightly run secretive campaign you know ever mm. we don't know what's going on behind closed doors yeah i mean it's a little listen the casage thing got leaked from casage it didn't get leaked from trump and you have to imagine that trump D- donald trump jr was going around to a couple of people making that offer right and it didn't get leaked yeah what it got leaked was from casage's campaign who's like fuck trump after well after they threw him under the bus for, over the uh, guns thing so yeah. Kasich, another guy who is done in the Republican Party <laughs> if Trump wins, by the way. Uh, he can hope to no higher office than governor. So, um, unless, yeah, so, unless the whole thing burns down and then you have another chance. Right. Well, I mean, if yeah. he loses or if the right, party right, turns right. itself apart, then, then Kasich is a Republican that could probably lead the GOP back. More like a Cory Republican. 
Yeah. Uh, although, maybe uh, chill out on the gay guy stuff. And, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not saying he's perfect. I'm saying he's closer to what I right. have come to expect from a Republican. But, so, so uh, you know, it, Pence doesn't salute Donald, thank God. And then Donald gets out there and proves himself to be every bit of the fastest leader that we'd hope he would be. <laughs> Number one, <laughs> Trump. Uh, many of the people who are going to be voting for you barely graduated from high school. Maybe keep or, that speech under an hour. But first of all, or they went to Trump University. <laughs> so, you know, they didn't get that good of an education. Maybe keep that speech under an hour. 70 fucking minutes. Number two, uh, if one of the first lines in your speech, much like one of the first, li- the first line that we started this podcast with, is uh, I'm going to give you the truth that the mainstream media doesn't want to give you. Uh, And then you start kicking out numbers. (laughs) Realize that people are going to look into that. The (laughs) second he said it, I was like, this is going to be a PolitiFact kind of night. Yes. And what was PolitiFact? What did they say? 50%? 50%. Yeah. And that is using generous numbers where he, assuming that a 58, a 57, 58%, he rounds up to 60 when he says 60. Right. And I'll give him that because, you know, 58 is, a, you know, whatever. We round up to 60. Yeah. Um, and the fact that he, you know, the 60% increase is from 112 to 140. But when eh. you say that 50% more cops have been shot so far in 2016 alone and it's only eight, you're off by... Yeah. You're not rounding up to the nearest half. No. No. You're right. <laughs> he didn't even say fifty. Yeah. He just said sixty. So Yeah, it's Yeah. No, there was a lot of <laughs> and here's the thing, it's easy to make that kind of claim at the top if you don't throw numbers out. Yeah. Just keep things nice and general. Oh, if you yeah, if you said uh Americans are upset with the way the country's going. Boom. Yeah, you can't it, pull it a fact that motherfuckers. <laughs> like <laughs> But if you're gonna say, I'm say, gonna close out a speech someday with that quote. Politifact dra- that motherfucker. <laughs> Politifact that motherfuckers. Drop mic. <laughs> yes. Um, huh, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. oh, hey, hey, uh, what you doing here? Hey. Yes. Exactly. Um. <laughs> I I don't know. The thing, the thing that I've been thinking about a lot today with Trump in his speech last night is uh, he he says he's going to fix things. He talks about the problems. Like, I'm going to fix it. You know, people are going to know on day one I'm the law and order candidate. It's like, okay, how? Yeah. Or why? Or any question that would follow that. And then usually in a political speech you would say, like, people are going to know that I'm the law and order candidate. My first day, 100 days in office, I'm going, to. I'm going to increase the police department budget, you know, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. I'm going to make sure that people have the resources that they need to be able to do their job. And I'm going to tell Black Lives Matter to go to Mars or whatever. Yeah. Like, th- that's how you usually do it. But well, he would rather just throw out, like, I'm going to be the law and order president. He can't do move that. Move on to the next step. He can't do that because Mike Pence spoke the night before. He doesn't <laughs> know how they're going to do these things. <laughs> He sets policy, and then he lets Mike Pence figure out right. how it's going to be done. That's how that's going to work. I, I think the, I think the thing about Trump that is the most fascinating is that he's he's known for his business. He's a businessman, yeah, tycoon. Uh, yet nobody's. Uh, I've heard him speak a lot on a lot of different subjects. Never. In depth, but you know, <laughs> right. in the Trump way, it's the one inch deep rather than one mile yeah. deep scenario. Uh, but you would think at some point, some some reporter is going to ask him, and I'm sure it's happened, and I just haven't seen it. But like, uh, but sort of on Brexit, he talked about it a little bit, and he just sort of spoke in j- vague generalities, like they're taking their country back. You're a businessman. You should have like very good instincts on like what you know like so somebody's like hey donald what do you think about the brexit and he's like well you know it's really going to be tough for that whole european area over the course of the next five years i mean in one night we get a sixteen thousand percent drop in their market now that's obviously going to be expected but when the niku doesn't pick up the slack and we have sort of a global economic down all at the same time it really has you know 
a substantial impact on the long term futures of if he started talking like that, like yeah. general business talk, which I, I would imagine he would have to know to be at this position in his life. Yeah. You would you would feel a little bit more like, oh, Donald kind of knows what's going on. Yeah, he's, he's, he's with it. But when he's just like, they're taking their country back and I couldn't be more proud. Next. Like, I'm like, he doesn't know anything. Like, what what part of – last night he, he just sort of proved that he, he can talk yeah. about the fact that they're – I mean, it was a very doom and gloom speech. Yep. It was very like, we, this is the end of days and I'm going to be the one who, you know, <laughs> takes us from back. the brink. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, and, and I, I, we've made the reference before jokingly, and I am not one to live by – what is the rule? Is it Miller's rule? No. Um, shoot. Every internet conversation eventually devolves to someone using Hitler or Nazis and yeah, yeah. whatever that rule is. Uh, but somebody – I saw a story today that compared his speech last night to the first speech that Hitler gave as a chancellor. Very, very similar. Very like doom and gloom and I am the only way. I am the only way and my first act will be to uh, clear out the uh, public service and to take away all of these jobs from people who don't deserve them. Wouldn't it be funny if he left in quotes from Hitler from the first draft and it just made it all the way to the end? (laughs) He's just like, where's my Aryans? Where are they? (laughs) <laughs> we got to watch out for these people. We got to make make America great again for these people. Yes. So it's like make Germany great again for these people. I mean, America. 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 <laughs> I ain't no Merkel. Oh, I ain't no Merkel. God. Well, and so it's it's disconcerting. But here's what I was going to say earlier. I did not watch Trump's speech because at this point I am voting for Donald Trump, which means at this point me watching the RNC just convinces me not to vote for Donald Trump. Yeah. There's nothing positive is going to come out of this I, for me. I, at, at some point in November, I'm going to have to tie you to a chair and then, like, clockwork arms, <laughs> like, keep your eyes open and make you watch it. And... Well, and only I will agree to do that voluntarily if, <laughs> if we do the same amount of coverage for the other candidates. Because then at that point, I just put a gun in my mouth and I end it all <laughs> because I don't want to vote. I don't want to vote yeah, for yeah. any of these people. But if I'm going to vote, I'll vote for the one that I uh, think will end it all. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I or, would uh, – a uh, couple couple last minute things on the yeah. RNC. Um, number one, uh, I can't remember where I heard this, but I, I thought it was spot on. Uh, the RNC as an organization, as soon as they have a candidate – Give the entire convention to them. Yeah. They run the show. So, you know, obviously the RNC is responsible for, like, booking Cleveland a year in advance. Right. Security. Security, that sort of stuff. But, you know, as soon as the candidate is chosen, the candidate picks who speaks, the candidate goes over uh, the schedule, you know, goes over the remarks, uh, figures out, like, how they're going to, like, what the themes of the nights are going to be. They're responsible for making the show go. Yeah. And just judging by the colossal clusterfuck that a convention caused in the Trump, like, yeah, <laughs> just yeah. makes me feel like it, if he had to run a country, not be good. It would be disastrous. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, number two, uh, Republicans. I know that uh, Hillary is the devil, and uh, don't necessarily disagree that it's the beginning of end of days and everything like that. But yeah. uh. Maybe a laugh every once in a while wouldn't be the <laughs> worst thing in the world. Or even better, uh, Melania spoke. I didn't see Ivanka or Don Jr. or any of them. Mm, I know they did speak, though, yeah. Uh, but from what I got, not a single person who went up there and spoke really spoke about, like, let me tell you about the Donald I know. Right. There was one, uh, uh, Peter Thiel, yeah. or no, uh... The oh god, there was some some real estate guy that Donald Trump had known for twenty years, and he went up there, and he was the only person that I could see throughout the entire thing who want, went up and said like, "I've known Donald Trump for twenty five years. Let me tell you about the Donald that I know." Right. Uh, he's generous and he's great, and yes, he's a little rough around the edges, but you know what? He gets things done. Yep. Like you know, I would like to tell you a story about the first time I met Donald Trump. You need more of that. You need... Uh, Humanize him. Yeah, make him seem like an actual yeah. person rather than some racist demagogue. Like, just 
Did you see the awkward exchange with him and Ivanka, by the way? Did you see the awkward exchange between him and Mike Pence? Oh, yes. He tried to make out with him. <laughs> oh, well, Mike Pence. His face was just priceless. He's just like, yo, fuck you, Trump. <laughs> fuck you, Trump. Ooh, nope. You, no, ain't, uh, you ain't embarrassing me in front of all my people. So Ivanka, he like rubs her arm gently yeah. and then pats her on the ass as she goes. And I'm like, yeah. that is your daughter, dude. Right. Not okay. That wouldn't be okay if it was just a, a staffer. Yeah, the second I saw it, I kept thinking back to if I was, if, if Ivanka wasn't, wasn't my, my daughter, I'd date her. Oh, God, I can't. Just By the way, this. how much happier would you be if Ivanka Trump was running for president instead of Donald Trump? The limited remarks I saw from her, actually, I I wouldn't say bad things about. She's that. she's real smart. She's not bad looking, <laughs> not, not in the least, <laughs> uh, and she's got incredible poise. Yeah, and I I think she she could run the world one day if she wanted to. She she has the she has all the makings. Stop not, stop sleeping with your dad. Yeah, that just certainly stop. help. <laughs> That skeleton in the closet will come out. We need to uh, stop that. Well, it wouldn't be the first time that he allegedly slept with a 14-year-old. Oh, God. Which, by the way, still no news. Yeah. You heard it here on the podcast. It has not made the national news yet. But um, one other thing I do want to touch on the RNC real quick is that uh, open carry state, no problems. There were no problems despite all the bullshit about how the protesters were going to be an issue. Nothing. And the police, the police uh, confiscated like six million tennis balls. So <laughs> uh, people could open carry guns, but they were confiscating tennis balls. This is 2016. It's ridiculous, and the ridiculousness is not done because as you listen to the sultry sounds of our voices, <laughs> the DNC is beginning in Philadelphia. So, what are you looking forward to for the DNC this week? I am looking forward to. Uh... Uh, mass chaos and pandemonium because the no, never- wait, 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 wait. I'm asking about the DNC. I'm not asking about the Taylor Swift, Kim Kardashian. We'll get to that. Okay. We'll get to All that. right. I want to talk wanna, about pandemonium. I want to, I want to, I want a moment with that one. <laughs> okay. but, uh, now the never Trump people. Yeah. Uh, as feckless as they've been the entire time and completely unable of doing the one thing that they should have been planning on <laughs> since Iowa, um, uh, are are going to be a pale comparison to what I imagine we're going to get from the Bernie Bros. Oh yes, in Philadelphia because those people have not given up yet. Well, and because their candidate's a lot closer than anybody was on the other side. Oh yeah, clearly. So, but I'm saying like much more of a contender, right? And the super delegates are going to decide this convention, right? Oh, it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. It's going to be fun for us, but it's going to be bad yeah. for the, the convention. I I I just don't know how they they they're going to bring the number 1, the Democrats are going to be able to bring out a lot more people that people want to see. Right. Um part of the reason why we got every single Trump kid except for 10-year-old Baron. <laughs> By the way, Baron. Baron <laughs> Trump. Um is because uh, nobody's that ashamed of Hillary. Yeah. At least not like they should be. So we're going to get Obama. We're going to get Clinton, obviously. Bill Clinton, obviously. Mm-hmm. Chelsea will uh, be there, too, though. Martin O'Malley speaking, I've heard. Oh, God. Uh, I'm sure there will be actual celebrities, A not Bayo. Celebrities, yeah. Not Scott Bayo. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, it, it should be a more entertaining, uh, a, a more fun-filled event. Not so much uh, black people are coming to kill you, as the Republican but side was. But. More black people protesting outside, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well. Because the platform completely ignored Black Lives Matter. Yeah. So, Well, why would black they? Because matter. they're super predators. <laughs> that's a remark from Hillary, okay? Just I so know. everybody knows. I know. Hillary, um, called, Hillary called black people super predators. That was and, just me... Um, uh, also, taking her position at one point. Of course, she doesn't believe it now because she doesn't believe anything she believed 20 years ago. Right. But Oh, I, I saw a great <laughs> meme that was like the best debate in history <laughs> is uh, 1993 <laughs> Hillary debating 2016 uh, Hillary. 16 versus 2003 Hillary versus 2008 Hillary. Let's put them all <laughs> up there and let them debate each other. Yeah. 
because uh, she's just she whiffle waffles around until she gets whatever she wants, and she needs black people to vote for her now. So of course she's totally pro Black Lives Matter. Now. Yeah, but none of that got made into the platform. None of the stuff about reform or anything. I imagine that the fu- the fun begins as soon as the platform is officially voted on and decided. Oh no, no. BLM will be there on Monday. Oh, I'm not saying oh, it's going to be fun starting Monday. I'm not saying that that, that it's not going to be fun. <laughs> I'm saying as soon as as soon as it's locked in, yeah. as soon as what Bernie wanted from the platform is like Oh, true. is completely voted in. Yeah. That's when you get the like unlock the delegates on the first vote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Recall that vote. Roll or you, call. <laughs> or you get the Bernie having a having a massive rally at the Rocky Steps. <laughs> At the same time, like, Martin O'Malley speaking about how great Hillary is. Yeah. There's, like, two people in the convention hall going, like, you do it, O'Malley. Can you imagine? 70,000 people. I was going to say, uh, the convention has, uh, you know, 4,000 delegates plus, uh, you know, maybe another 2,000 support staff there. Mm -hmm. And then... (laughs) Media and right, but yeah, Bernie gets seventy thousand people across town to come listen to him, and so he's just like, "Oh yeah, uh, this is not the guy we're. This is not the guy that we nominated. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, good for us." It would be funny if if uh, Bernie uh, puts in the speech, like gives his speech up to the people, and then uh, they review it, and they're like, "Oh, this is really good. That, yeah. You know, this this will this will work for bringing the party together." Thanks, Bernie. And then he just gets up on stage. He's just like <laughs> off script. <laughs> yeah, just ripped the speech up, and he's just like, "Yo, let me tell you, what, Bernie's here to tell you what's up." <laughs> Burn dogs here. Oh god, I can't wait for it. And we're going to probably have a VP announcement Friday. soon. Yeah. Uh, so before you guys hear this, it was yeah. supposed to be today, but uh, I imagine it'd be late. Do you have tonight. a Do you have a uh, a guesstimate? Um, Elizabeth Warren is my. Uh, was my early contender, but I don't think that they'll go that direction now. I think now that they Republicans have gone Pence, yeah, they need to go with the more uh, baseline option. Probably, so. I would probably say Tim Kaine or Julian Castro are the ones. I think Kaine's probably the front runner now. Also, I think Bernie got everything he wanted from the uh, process of the. Uh, platform, mm-hmm. so uh, Elizabeth doesn't serve any purpose anymore for right. Hillary because we got the Bernie in. Well, much like much like YouTube commenters on Ghostbusters, I imagine that a lot of the nation will look at a Clinton Warren campaign and say uh, too many women. <laughs> They're looking at a Clinton campaign and saying too many women. So <laughs> I look at a Clinton campaign and I say not enough women. Um, but <laughs> Cl- yes, Hillary will put her balls right on the table and make you measure the dick. <laughs> Uh, but it, one big bit of news that's not involving either of those, but both of those. Hofstra got a debate this hey! year. First debate, too. I know. Well, I, gonna... I almost prefer the third one, but, you know, the first debate's good. The first debate's going to be fire. Oh, it's going to be good. It's yeah. Good. And plus, well, how many, did they agree on how many debates? They, I think there's three with possibility of more, depending. So, See, I feel like less debates helps Hillary. Probably so, because Donald's fucking good. But the problem is, if by debate three we got five people on the stage, she gets real interesting. That's why I'm saying the third one might be the money one, because uh, Johnson's at 13, depending on who you ask, 14% nationally. Stein's at 11% nationally. And if Cruz throws his hat in, if Bernie gets up on the TNC stage and is like... I'm not out of it. I'm running independent. Vote Bernie 2020, 2016. Yeah. And just like drops the mic and rolls off stage. We got ourselves a race. Yeah. And um, it could make the debates very interesting. So Yeah. I, I, I would I would tune in for that one for oh, sure. God. <laughs> but that's why I'm saying. So th- that probably is not likely to happen in the first debate, which I think is scheduled for August or September. Um, it's real early. And if you remember when they had it the last time, it was like in November. Yeah. Or no. Late October. It was right. real late October, right before the election. So everything was kind of settled down. It was all kind of like fluff, and we've heard all this shit before. Yeah. So on the one side, you get the good, fresh message. But on the back side, if we have five people by the end, we're not going to see that at Hofstra. But now now that we're Hofstra. done with the boring politics stuff, mm-hmm. Kanye West, Kim Kardashian, and Taylor Swift. I'm just going to take a quick nap. Go ahead. No, 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 because I need your legal things right no, okay, here. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Um, so for those of you who have been living under a rock like Rob. Yeah. Uh, or who just don't care. Yeah, who don't care. That's fine, too. Uh, I don't really care either. The part that I care about is the fact that people might serve jail time. Which <laughs> is always... Kim and Kanye yeah. serve jail time. She'll turn it into a goddamn show, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> 
<laughs> keeping up with the jailed Kardashians. <laughs> Through the, through the glass, doing her testimony. Keeping up with the clink. Oh. <laughs> There's too many Ks in that. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> Kim Kardashian in the clink. Nope, nope. We nope, cannot nope. do that. Nope, can't do it. We'll just join it to KKK. Oh, nope. wait. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, by the way, the Duke is running for... Uh, I saw it. Uh, L.A. Uh, Louisiana. Senator in Louisiana, yeah. Woo, doggy. That's going to be a fun race. <laughs> and his, his thing was like, Donald Trump has proven that all my platforms say... <laughs> That's literally something they asked him. It's just like, why are you running? He's just like, Donald Trump proved that there's still a place for me. Yeah. Well, although he said, I'm not I'm not embracing the past, but I'm also not, you know, looking at the past. Yeah. But everything I've run on before is basically Donald Trump's campaign. So right. here I am again, <laughs> moving from North Carolina to Louisiana. Might as well make it happen. Louisiana is especially racist, so I'll do well here. It'll be great. Well, I haven't heard of anything happening in, like, Baton Rouge, for instance. So maybe, uh... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. None of that. Um, no, but this uh, this Kim, Kanye, Taylor Swift. Let me catch you up real quick. Ahead, I know yes. you're completely out of the loop. Well, I'm not completely because I had some mentees that are 13, 15, and sixteen. So <laughs> <clears throat> I got the breakdown. But go ahead. Uh, Kanye wrote a song where he was going to mention having sex with Taylor Swift in it, right? And calls up Taylor to give her the heads up. Um. And uh, they record that phone call in which Taylor is very like, oh, it's an honor. You know, I, I appreciate you telling me and I, I, I look forward to it. And he says. Although he doesn't say what the context of the usage of her name is. Right. He just sort of says the line mm-hmm. uh, that he plans on putting in the song. And then he says, hey, before I'm done, I'll send it to you uh, so you can so you can check it out. And you know what's up kind of thing. Uh, fast forward to when they release the song and it goes from the line that he said to, uh, I made that bitch famous or like, I, I still want to fuck Taylor or whatever. I don't know. I couldn't possibly care less. Right. Um, the part that's interesting is that he makes a music video with features a naked quote unquote Taylor Swift. A bunch of people in bed. Right? Yeah, that yeah. was the one with a bunch of people in yeah, bed yeah, yeah. that he made famous. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, that's when it got a little bit out of, like, Taylor Swift is upset that uh, he would do that and he would disrespect her and call her a bitch on the song. And then uh, said, we've never had a conversation about this. At which point Kim released the tape of them talking on the phone back in February or whatever. Right. Uh, where she not only agreed to it, but said, like, she can't wait and Kanye's a genius and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. The part that I love about this. Right. Because people don't talk to their lawyers enough. Yeah. Yeah. And you'd think that uh, Kim being the, the daughter of a former lawyer uh, think. would think. know these things a little <laughs> bit. But yeah. Um, yeah. They just both committed a felony. Yeah. Uh, and Taylor can sue them civilly, which right. I guess it all depends on how much she wants to cry over spilled milk. But uh, it's funnier. The criminal part's funnier, though. The criminal part's <laughs> hilarious. I can't wait for the two of them to spend jail time. Yeah. Um, I would like. I, I think Taylor Swift would would worm her way into a special part of my heart uh, if she just press charges. If she just afterwards she held a press conference or whatever, she's just like, uh, yeah. So I mean, it's against the law. It's a felony. So there's that reason for doing it. Uh, the other reason for doing it is uh, nobody likes these two fucking bitches, so... <laughs> we, they gotta be held accountable. You're welcome, America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? I just... I, I, I look forward to that. I, I hope that I hope that charges come. It would be... It would fill my heart with joy. Can you imagine Kanye doing a perp walk? <laughs> now he's selling bracelets that look like cuffs, and he's like, <laughs> yeah, see, what you do is you just lock them both up, and then you walk like this, because <laughs> that's a new cool thing to do. <laughs> And he gets to write a song about being in jail for six minutes or whatever. And he's like, he's got, he's walking. No, no, like, no, no. He's famous in the front. Up front, I'm sorry. I'm in sorry. the front with the uh, with the uh, jacket over the cuffs. Yeah, yeah. But he's walking with the cuffs, and yeah. then the paparazzi are taking pictures. He's like, "Go fuck y'all guys." <laughs> <laughs> It's like Kanye going crazy on TMZ reporters as he's doing his perp walk. And then he walks into a sign. <laughs> Bunk. Oh, man. How great <laughs> oh, was that? Oh, Kanye, I miss you. But yeah, so let's hope that uh, he gets arrested. And uh, and he, I don't really care. These guys are all just masturbating furiously over each other. So yeah. it is what it is. 
Um, Taylor Swift is not a person who I want to be the savior of anybody, but, you know, uh, if she can bring some brief entertainment for you, then I'm fine with that as well. So, yeah, sure. Whatever, uh, whatever floats your boat there, my friend. I'm fine with it. I, I, <laughs> I would like, I would like the keeping up with the Kardashians to have a jail edition. I just... <laughs> L.A. County edition. <laughs> yeah. Nope, not Orange County. L.A. County, <laughs> the jail. Let's do this. I guess it depends on where the phone call was made, right? Oh, no. Uh, depends where the recording was made. Yes. But the recording and the phone call happened in the same place. It depends. Uh, yes, but it depends where they were when they received the phone call. It also kind of depends where Taylor was when she made the phone call, because theoretically, the yeah, it but if could he, be federal if law. If he called could, her. Did he call her? Oh, I don't know. I'm just saying or if did, he called her. Did, I would have to people, imagine that he would call her because. Unless his people called her people and then she called him. And there's a lot There's a lot of involvement here. And that's, yeah. that's where it gets funny. Is there but the recording itself took place in that room, and that room is the question I probably biggest. Well, Rick Ross was in that room too, so well, you know, he's a former uh, he's a former corrections officer. You think he would say, <laughs> "Yo, yo, don't do that, don't, don't record, <laughs> don't ask her if you could record it first. <laughs> oh, hey, t- oh, <laughs> ask if you can record. Hey, hey, Taylor, for quality service purposes, it's called being recorded. <laughs> or interesting enough, uh, if. The call got forwarded through someone's office, like Taylor's people and Hit Kanye's people got on the phone, and there was a warning of recording, and then they forwarded the, those calls to their respective clients. It would not be a violation of law. Hmm. God damn. Interesting. Being famous sucks. <laughs> Just so everybody knows, I will have the same phone number. So when you call me, I'm going to ignore you. <laughs> I'll ignore you then just like I ignore you now. It doesn't really, doesn't really matter how famous I get. Listen, I'm a partner in this project and I get ignored. You know, that's not true. I call back. <laughs> Eventually. I, I mean, I do call back. But sometimes I'm, you know, uh, where was I Hello's? last night? Uh, last night I was at Walmart talking to a lady outside and I had to get in the car. And, uh, you know, so. Hey, well. Uh, we do, got. Do you want to talk a little bit about Baltimore before yes. we go? Yeah. So we'll take it on down to the Baltimore corner where you get the straight dope. Exactly right. Uh, first of all, kind of an update on last week's episode. We were talking about what will happen when the Orioles come out of the break, and we may have overestimated the Orioles coming out of the break. Yeah. Well, listen, they are. Uh, it's a sick team right now. Yeah. The flu bug went around. Buck missed a game. Chris Davis missed a game. Uh, Matt Wieters took one off the foot. Uh, Adam Jones had a back spasm. Uh, Joey Rickard is like busted his thumb up, and Hyun Soo Kim is on the DL. So but no, uh, no break for Rickard though. Saw that before we got yeah, started. Yeah. That it, it's good. He's good. So, um, so I I don't necessarily feel horrible about them going three and four to break coming out the break. Still uh, 12 games above 500. Yeah, but I'm, way, so. I'm saying it's it's it, it doesn't look great because, you know, they lost 3-4 and four to the Yankees. But th- this team hasn't been right. So I'd, I'd rather wait until and see as the team gets healthier and, right. you know, O'Day comes back soon and it'll be okay. It'll yeah. be okay. I think the big question is, is do the Orioles make a trade in the next week? For the trade deadline. Yeah. Yeah, because as you guys are listening to this, we are – the end of the month comes on Sunday. Yeah. So they would really make a move by the end of this week. So we'll become I mean, them. You, you – I, I, I've heard a lot of talk about Andrew Kashner, which I wouldn't be opposed to. I think he's uh, – I think his, his peripherals look a lot worse than how he's actually pitched. Um, but if we make a move, I don't imagine it's going to be a world beater. So don't get your hopes up for Sonny Gray or anything like that. Refer back to last week's episodes, episode <laughs> 119, where Corey talks about how the, you can expect this to go. Underwhelming trade now, maybe a pickup later in the season where we just take somebody some money off somebody's plate down the uh, stretch. Yeah. When we actually need somebody. I mean, like, we could have a trade before the break where we get, you know, Andrew Kashner. Right. And people are just like, oh, what the fuck is this? And then, you know, maybe during the August non-waiver trade deadline, we get Yasiel Puig. You Mike, don't know. Mike Trout. Well, it's not going to be Trout. <laughs> Somebody's going to put a claim on Trout. <laughs> but, you don't know. It, it, some people, it's surprising the names that get through uh, waivers on the non, what I was gonna say, non-waiver I, trade deadline. We picked up Andrew, uh, what's his name? 
Um, that was before the regular trade. Was it before the yeah. trade deadline? I thought it was after. I thought it no, was no. a period after. Okay. No, we've picked up other people. I think the. But, to be fair, I'm pretty sure the Jake Arrieta, yeah, Pedro Strope, Scott Feldman, uh, Steve Clevenger trade happened after was during the non waiver. Yeah. But uh, Andrew is it Andrew Lincoln. I want to keep saying that, but I don't think that's right. That's from The Walking Dead. It's that Andrew right. Miller. Andrew Miller. <laughs> Uh, Andrew Miller trade was also not a world beater. People weren't saying that it was going to be a big deal, but he helped us down the stretch the way that we really needed help. Well, that's the question. I mean, we can put together a package of things to get somebody really great if we wanted to. I mean, it's probably involves giving up Pedro or, uh, uh, Jonathan scope. Right. Um, but we can make that trade, but do you want to hurt yourself later for the chance to win? Do we want to hurt 2017, 2018? Renegotiating with man. I mean, the or... we gave up a, a a pretty good pitching prospect in Eduardo Rodriguez to get Andrew Miller. Do we give up the future for the chance to win right now? Because Andrew Miller was only going to be on the team for the rest of the season. Yes. So it was a World Series or bust kind of move. And we busted. Uh, I say yes, though, because I'm planning on moving to L.A., and I would like them to win while I still live in Maryland. So I would like to rather buy those bet the farm. World Series bet T-shirts. The farm. <laughs> I want to buy the World Series T-shirts before I move so I don't have to pay for the shipping. Yes. That's bet, part of the... <laughs> bet the farm now. Let's do it. Let's trade everybody. Let's... Uh, we can have a fire sale in January. Just let's bet the farm now. And yeah. Bet, get that ring now. While I still live in the Flags city. fly forever. <laughs> So, uh, from one Baltimore sport to the other, uh, kind of, uh, Ray Rice back in the news again. Former Raven, Ray Rice. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to comment this because I thought you had an interesting point on this. Ray Rice is now saying that he's willing, if someone is willing to give him a contract, even league minimum, just let him play and he'll donate the entirety of his game pay to domestic violence charities. Yeah. But you had an interesting comment about that story. I I, hasn't he suffered enough? I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. What he did was horrible. Uh, and uh, he deserves to be punished for that. But I think he's been punished enough. Right. Michael Vick actually killed dogs and mm-hmm. was back in the league quicker than Ray Rice has. Now, he did what, jail time too, by the way. Yeah, yeah. What I imagine, what Ray Rice is thinking to himself, or what Ray Rice's agent is probably telling him. Yeah. Is uh, nobody wants to touch you right now because they think you're done, right? So, and the the domestic violence thing only hurts. Like, if you sign with somebody, then you got to deal with it again, and they got to deal with it. And why'd you why'd you pick them up? And blah 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 blah. Yeah. If you make this offer, then it's not going to hurt you financially. You've made money, yeah. Uh, but you sign a one year deal for the league minimum. You give up the money for charity, and that way, it doesn't it doesn't feel wrong to the people. Who see you coming in? It feels like you've made some sort of uh, yeah. appeal to to fix the situation. Put up fifteen hundred yards, and then next year you come out and you you can get a real contract from yeah. somebody else. Yeah. But I I understand the logic behind it, and I understand that you know he he probably does you know legitimately want to be more involved in domestic violence prevention, right? Because he's realized how quickly it can ruin your life. Yeah. Um, but uh, let it go to people. He's married to the woman. He allegedly, uh, not allegedly. He, he did. I mean, we saw the video. We don't know. Listen, the mutual, <laughs> you, you and I get into a fight and the camera catches you punching me. Is that an assault of you on me? Yes. But if the camera doesn't catch the fact that I hit you twice beforehand, mm-hmm. now we have what's called a mutual combat situation. We've agreed that we are going to be trading blows. Right. Now, the fact that uh, you are much stronger in this fictionalized theoretical world than I am, uh, and you knock me down, you know. I'll show you stronger right now, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I'm just, yeah, I, and I am the biggest advocate against domestic violence. But yeah. I agree that he suffered enough. He has shown as much penance as we can possibly do. He deserves another shot. This does not. This should not ruin his life. Right. And somebody needs to give the man a shot. And if this is what it takes, then that's fine. I'm not going to say it's a bad idea for him to donate seven hundred thousand dollars to domestic violence charities. Hey Ray, I got a couple charities I can suggest to you if you're really looking to make yeah. some, some help here in Maryland, especially. I can I can uh, recommend some, but. He shouldn't have to do that. I agree with you. He shouldn't have to do that. Um, let's. How about the league 
take a position on this? How about the league say, you know what? That's a great idea. Somebody hire him, and if they do, we're going to match his donations because domestic violence is a problem in the league. And you know what? I'm uh, I'm not trying to make an apples to apples comparison here or anything like that because all these situations are different. Yeah. And uh, sadly, the talent of the person that we're talking about usually outweighs what they did. Right. Yeah. Aroldis Chapman is pitching for the Yankees right now. Everyone's talking about, you know, can my team possibly put a trade together to get Aroldis Chapman from the Yankees? Aroldis Chapman this offseason, he was suspended for this. Yeah. He, he served 40 games or whatever it was. Uh, had a fight with his girlfriend or fiance or whatever the case was. Uh, roughed her up quite a lot. And then uh, in a moment of anger, went into the garage and fired a handgun into the wall. Not at her. Not at her, just but he was so him. upset that he went in and fired his gun just to get the <laughs> get it out of his system. Which brings up a whole bunch of which, other stuff. Which could have easily have been him going back in with the gun yeah, and sure. shooting her. But, but it wasn't. It wasn't, I'm just saying. But that, that seems a lot more extreme than what happened with Ray Rice. Yeah. Yet nobody seems to be... There, there's not a huge outrage over Aroldis Chapman pitching every night. No. Uh, there was some outrage at the moment. There was a little out of outrage when he was traded to the Yankees, but that went away Yeah, pretty much with the suspension. Uh, Ray Rice's biggest crime was the fact that he wasn't suspended for what he did No, at the time when he was... It, it was one of those horrible Goodell moves where he suspended him for two games and thought that was going to be fine. And then once people saw the video and they're just like, holy shit, he's now just like, oh, now I got to suspend him for four... Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like it, it <sighs> his life was essentially ruined by Goodell, which right. Goodell's done a lot of. So it's all right. And Tom Brady will be serving for at the beginning of this year. So yeah, but you know, sometimes what? he makes some good decisions too. That's my point. Is <laughs> I, uh, as much as I personally hate Tom Brady, yeah. and like bad things to come to him, I, I I think it's kind of bullshit that Tom Brady is being suspended for that either, because the science has pretty much well proved that the <laughs> NFL didn't do shit. I don't believe any of that. All right, I I. Think that Tom Brady deserves to be suspended for his ent- rest of his career? I'm mean, four games, whatever, uh, whatever it has, whatever he has. Uh, but uh, you know, it's I, I would say though that there domestic violence is a problem in the country. It's a problem, especially in professional sports. There should be a bigger deal made about it. But let's focus on what the problem is and not this ancillary stuff of giving this guy the scarlet letter that's going to follow him for the rest of his life and ruin the rest of his life. Because yeah. here's the thing. There's lawyers practicing in Maryland who have had domestic violence charges, who have had domestic violence convictions, but they move on and they go do the rest of their life. Their their profession is protecting other people from domestic violence, and they are, in fact, guilty of domestic violence in their past. Yeah. This guy doesn't have anything to do with domestic violence. He is a sports – he plays sports. Let the man play some sports, and if we can get something good for these charities, hey, league, step up and do that as well, then let's get that done too. I mean, a team could donate too, just to like anything. In addition, in addition to what Ray Rice is doing, we're going to match that. Oh, and the league was match it as well. Yeah, I mean, why doesn't every team match it as well? What What does seven hundred thousand dollars really matter to any? Yeah, any any NFL NFL team at this moment, right? Um, One last thing before we go, because I know uh, you've been hot about it all week. Ah, yeah. Uh, There was arrest of uh, sixty five protesters. Yes. At Artscape. Do you want to set up the... the well, so, yeah, so there was... Uh, a, the movement in Baltimore has now turned into uh, what they're calling affirmation, where people are getting together and, and being affirmative about... Uh, people, Black Lives Matter, yes, but it's more than that. It's about institutional racism and institutional... Uh, the way that we institutionally treat poor people and everything else and as a community coming together and reaffirming ourselves. And so they uh, they had a secret uh, build up and a secret protest that kind of just like became during Artscape. And the police um, lied to the protesters and said that they were blocking ambulances. So the protesters moved. And when they moved into a place where they could be easily corralled, then they were arrested. And the uh, sirens and lights weren't, in fact, ambulances. They were police vans coming to take them away. Now, quick question, because I haven't been following the ins and outs of the story. Yeah. Like, you have. But there, I have seen the photo of them lined up on 83. Yeah. Uh, what what part did that play in... The original story, and it, it's still unclear because a lot of people aren't really talking about what the details were. They were saying they were blocking 83. 
my understanding is that they were blocking Charles Street at 83. But then uh, that street was closed. So it's likely that they weren't actually doing that, that they probably were blocking actually 83 uh, upon further review. Um, I mean, there's a picture of it, of them. Of them actually blocking yeah. a, a road, which I assumed was 83. But the problem was it, it, the police corralled them and moved them a couple of times before they got them on the ramp to 83. And that's where they eventually arrested everybody. Uh, so, yes. So they were blocking the highway just like they people have been doing not all saying this that, country. Not saying that one part is a reason that they should have suffered the second part. But, right. So, yeah. uh, number one, you've now broken the trust of this group. So... If you're in an ambulance and you're blocked by protesters, you're you're fucked because now this group especially will never move because they moved for an ambulance and it turned out it was paddy wagons to take them on a rough ride across the city. Uh, and then they sat in those uh, paddy wagons for eight hours with the heat on in the middle of the summer in a hundred degree day. And the cops got out and cranked the heat and shut the doors. And they gave them no water and they gave them no medical attention. People were throwing up and passing out. Uh, they were cuffed in the back of a van for eight hours, which not only is a violation of Baltimore policy, Baltimore police policy. Uh, it's not only a violation of local law. It's not only a violation of Maryland law. It's not only a violation of federal law. It goes against... <laughs> The UN, uh, UN uh, treaties on how we treat political prisoners, prisoners of war, it, basically any way that you're supposed to treat people that you take into captivity, yeah. that treatment breaks it. So it's essentially like a war crime. It, it's uh, well, No, because you can't as – those protesters are not uh, – they're not a combatant. They're not non-combatants. Yeah. So – the protections of those laws don't apply. Yeah. That's the funny thing is because they're citizens exercising a constitutional right, the protections of all these wonderful things don't apply. Yeah. But essentially, if we had declared open war against the country or the city or whatever else, yes, that would have been a war crime for yeah. them to be treated that way. Well, And by the way, teens as young as 15 – uh, who were separated from their parents, and the parents, when they inquired, were told the wrong information, sent across the city to the wrong places, um, and held in the back of these vans from teenage to 60, uh, held in these conditions. And it's abysmal. And uh, what do we hear from Stephanie Rawlings Blake, our beautiful mayor? What did we hear from Commissioner Davis, the commissioner of Baltimore, Street, uh, Baltimore Police Department? Fucking radio silence. Yeah. But of course, they came out the next day and. Gave a statement about everything. That the happened. police department did, right? But not the commissioner. Right? The police department spokesman yeah. did, uh, and said that nobody's filed any complaints. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and in fact, which I think is funny because complaints don't really matter. People have learned. Why yeah. the fuck would I file a complaint? Nothing's going to happen. Yeah, but commissioner it's said not like nothing. anybody's going to hear about it either. True. Yeah, but the commissioner said nothing. The mayor has said nothing. The mayor hasn't even been in the city. She was here for Artscape the day before. By the and way, then out. by the way, because uh, uh, Rachel and Laura were down there. Yeah, uh, they introduced SRB prior to Wyclef John going on. <laughs> yeah, she walked down on stage. It looked like she was ready to pre- uh, say a prepared remark, but was booed so heavily <laughs> she just basically just walked straight. Good, good. She just basically like, hey, bye, see ya. <laughs> Fuck her. Yeah. Do your job or quit. And I know that you've already quit. Yeah. But, but there's nothing we can do until we get a new mayor. Well, so at least do your job until then. No, you know what you know what it is though? She's just she's a fucking coward. Well, yeah. I mean, if you can't if you if you don't want to do the job and you don't want to quit, then you're just setting us back. Yeah. So either fucking come out and say something about it, do something about it, or get out of here cuz let somebody well, this else is take not, the This is up. not the time for cowards to be in charge. No. So that's basically my thought on that. And uh, Michael A. Wood, again, I, you know, I don't agree with him on everything. Him and I uh, clash, especially when it comes to the guns issue. But what he said is when you see cops getting shot in Dallas and you see uh, cops getting shot in Baton Rouge, this is a natural response to how people have been treated around the country. And when you see that after that happens, this happens in Baltimore, you have to ask yourself, how long until this thing just devolves into a, an outright civil war? Because we, we have these sovereign citizens who are doing these kind of shootings. And then you're locking up 
teenagers and the young 20 somethings who are radical who are radicalizing as we speak yeah. all the way up to 60 year olds and he's like if you look at examples elsewhere in the world we bombed syria this week which completely missed the news altogether but we killed 65 innocent people in syria this week as well and the reactions of the people who are the parents of the children who were killed and the brothers and sisters were like this is why we hate america and that is why we hate america but you want to turn somebody a radical you uh, show them their sick child who has been sitting in the back of a van with the heat turned on in the middle of summer for eight hours, cuffed, and now that they're sick and that it takes them three days to recover. Because that guy is now saying, well, I'm proud of my daughter, and next time she goes out, I'm going to be right out there with her. And it's a slow creep towards open revolt between these two factions. So you heard me talking about it for a year now. <laughs> Check out my blog. Read my book. You know what's not run by cowards? What's that? Oh, the anthem.com. Corey at oh, the anthem.com. Oh, the anthem on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the listener line, 443-219-7595. What's that number again? 443-219-7595. I also object that it's, it's certainly run by a coward. But, uh, you Listen, can... <laughs> don't speak so badly about yourself. <laughs> You can find me on all your social networks at Robert N. Cheek. Make sure you check out robertncheek.com, where you can check out my political blog I previously spoke about, my news website, and you'll find links to my books, which are available on Amazon. Buy Rob's books. And that one on the left there, The Moving Insurrection, uh, it's an instruction manual, so check that out. <laughs> <laughs> but make sure you click through the link uh, that's uh, on the website there to uh, check it out. So, Well, I think we've done good here today. <laughs> <laughs> We've done something. I don't know if it's good. Uh, but as always, uh, you are listening to the O the Anthem podcast, part of the O the Anthem digital network. Uh, for Corey, this is Rob. Have a great week, everybody. Let's close it out with a good Melania Trump quote. Well, before you do that, uh, don't forget the rest of the shows on the network. Check out the uh, Dirty Show Underground podcast, new episodes every Tuesday, and the Anthem Alliance podcast, new episodes every Friday. So check those out. Sorry. Melania Trump? Go ahead. Yeah. You got one? I, I don't, I don't about, care about her. Go ahead. How Give about a... a not what you can do for your country, but what your country can do for you. <laughs> so, uh, I'm a proud black woman who grew up in New Jersey. <laughs> Stay woke!